My name is Ana Garcia, and these are my teammates, Yanni Shi, Rebecca Borson, and Sam Vinci. And together, we built Memory Palace. Memory Palace is a 3D visualization of the popular mnemonic device known as Method of Loci, in which people imagine a palace in their mind and place objects throughout that palace to help them remember something. For example, if you wanted to remember the 50 states of America, you might place a snowman on the sofa to help you remember Minnesota or Minnesota. You might also place a Wall Street bull on the table or the floor to help you remember New York. Using 3JS, we were able to create a 3D web version of a memory palace. So users can walk through different rooms and select and place objects that symbolize a message. 3JS is a JavaScript library that abstracts WebGL and allows developers to create a three-dimensional world. And this library was completely new to all of us, so we were really excited by the challenge and the possibility it gave us to dig deep into new technologies and to discover more about memory palaces. So 3JS allows you to build very basic geometries and scenes, but it doesn't have any built-in physics, collision detection, or animation. And so in order to build our memory palace, uh, we needed to build our own game engine. So um, not only can users walk around the room and explore, but they can also select an object from the object carousel that uh, represents what they're trying to remember and um, place it in, um, in the room. Uh, you can manipulate the objects by using trackpad gestures, such as pinching and two-finger scroll. And you can also have the option of adding a message to your object that um, sets a reminder for you. So the next time you mouse over the object, the message will appear. Um, so, as you can imagine, um, designing the most intuitive possible user interface was very important to us. And so we tested a lot of different combinations of keyboard mappings for the first person controls um, and tested them with different users to make sure we came up with the um, best setup possible. We leveraged several different technologies when building our palace, including Express and SQLize on the back end and Angular on the front end. It was very important that for, to us that our app be modular. In future, we hope to make it so that users can build their own palaces and that we'll have many different types of palaces for them to choose from. In order to achieve this, we structure our app so that our default palace, which you see here, is a constructor in its own factory and all the walls and ceilings are also constructors and factories so that we can easily expand it later. Angular gave us this flexibility, but integrating it with 3JS was a challenge. 3JS requires a lot of context. The scene, the renderer, and the lighting all depend on each other pretty intimately. So in order to figure it out, we really had to break down the scene and think about when those breakpoints actually were. On top of being um, difficult to integrate with Angular, 3JS also posed a lot of challenges in that it doesn't come with a built-in uh, game engine. Uh, nor does it come with collision detection. And as you can see here, on the left side is a view of what you would see if you actually went to our website with collision detection in place. On the right is what would happen if you didn't have collision detection. Users would be able to walk through walls, objects would be placed inside of other objects, um, not ideal for our world. Uh, so we built our own collision detection by using ray casters and bounding boxes. Um, we placed two ray casters. One is essentially on the camera. So when a user is exploring the palace, they're really moving the camera around to get a different angle. If that camera's raycaster detects a wall in its way, it won't allow the user to move there. Similarly, with objects, uh, we have a raycaster essentially coming out of the mouse. So if you're trying to place an object and an object is in its path, um, the object that you're placing will be stacked on top of that other object. Um, and we did that by uh, wrapping all of our objects in bounding boxes. Uh, they're not inherently cube-shaped. So um, as you can see here, we kind of put this forced bounding box around it. We made it invisible so that users can't tell what's going on in the back end. Uh, but that allows us to make our world more realistic for users. Uh, and you can check it out for yourself at www.memory-palace.co. And we'd love to have any questions now. <laughs> 